Okay, this task you've chosen to have a look at today is a slightly easier version of drawing a castle. We're going to draw this castle. This will be how your drawing will look when you're done. And I'd like to show you step by step how to go from a blank piece of paper to achieving something like this. Now, while you're drawing, make sure that your ruler is only ever vertical or it's going through one of the vanishing points. If you follow those rules, vertical or through a vanishing point, your drawing will turn out much better. As soon as you start to let your ruler lean over and not be quite vertical, it's really hard to recover and your drawing will get slightly worse and worse. So be as accurate as you can be. So the first thing to do is to draw a line straight across the middle of your page. Have your paper landscape, take your time and draw that line. And like I say, the more accurate you can be, the better. Then draw a dot on each end of the line, somewhere near the edge of your page. Those will be our vanishing points, and your ruler can go to those points, and that will keep your drawing accurate. Now we just drop in one long vertical line straight up the middle of your page, somewhere in between those two dots. And this will be the middle part of our drawing. We can then take the top and bottom of that line to both vanishing points. So take a look here, this is what you should end up with. A big line in the middle, and then the top and bottom taken to each side. We can then put in two more vertical lines, one on the left, one on the right, to make sure that you've got the edges of your castle drawn. And have a look at the original drawing. Think about what it is you're trying to draw here. Think about what sort of shape a castle tower would be. Next up, we're going to put in some, uh, some crenellations at the top. Most people call these turrets. Their actual name is crenellations. These are the bits at the top of a castle that you can look through and shoot out to defend your castle. So to do this, we're going to put some little light marks on just to see where we think we might go. And then when we're happy, drop in some vertical lines that go from the top of our castle to that construction line that cuts through just below the top edge. And this makes sure that all of our crenellations are the same depth from the top to that line. And we do this on both sides of our castle tower. When you drop in those vertical lines, be as accurate as you can be and keep them upright. The most common mistake that I see when people draw this is their crenellations start to lean out and out and out. And by the time you've done the last one, the tops of your castle spread out and it doesn't look good. Keep those lines vertical and stick with that part of that rule. Now that we've got that bit done, we can commit to some bold lines. We can press hard and make sure that people see this as the drawing we want them to see. There might be quite a lot of lines on here that we don't want people to see, all of those construction lines. So we reserve our darker lines for this bit where we say, right, that bit's good, let's go over it. You can use a B pencil for this, or a 2B, or a 4B, anything like that. Or you can just take any pencil and press slightly harder at this time to make those lines darker on your page. Just make sure that you're pressing as lightly as you can for the other lines, so there's a big difference between the two. And there we have the start of our tower, the outline is done. And the next thing we can do is start to add a few details to this. Now, of course, you're welcome to add different things, but I'm going to start with a door. And I'm going to make my door rectangular. It's not going to have an arch on it, that's more difficult to do. So for this task, for this part of, uh, of our learning, we're going to do a rectangular door. So you can see we take in the top line, the top of our door from the vanishing point across the right hand face of our, of our tower, and then we drop two vertical lines from that on either side. 
I'm going to go a little bit more into depth here. I'm going to add some wood planks onto my door. And again, notice that they go from the vanishing point across the door. I'll keep these lines light though. I don't want them to be dark and overpowering on this drawing. So they'll stay light, but the outline of the door can become darker later. Here, I'm adding some planks along that door. These planks would be how the door is made out of planks of wood. And I'm dropping some vertical lines in there. Again, don't let your ruler lean over to the side. Keep your ruler vertical so that your ruler is always as upright as you can get it on the page. If you let them start to go, the next one will be slightly worse and worse and worse. And it's hard to recover from that. You need to be accurate to start with. So like I said, going around the door, making that bold on the outside edge and then leaving the details on my door lighter so that they don't overpower the drawing. Here come some windows. You're welcome to do this if you want to. Have a go, you don't have to, of course. You could do something slightly different with some cross-shaped windows, which you often see on castles, but I'm gonna keep mine rectangular for this task. So we start off with a line that suggests the top and bottom edge of all of these windows. And then we drop in some vertical lines and keep them vertical for the edges of our windows. We can do this on both faces, on the left and right side of our castle, and then we can go over those windows with a bold pencil when we're happy with it. Notice that the tops of all of the windows are the same height, and we show that on this drawing with this technique by making sure that the ruler goes through the vanishing point on that side of the drawing. That way, you'll keep all of your windows the same height, even though, of course, the one that's further away appears smaller. Things nearer to us appear bigger. So taking this onto the other side of our drawing now, we need to take the bottom edge of those windows and the top edge of those windows and make a mark on our center line so that we can take that point onto the other side of our castle. And we can use that mark, that reference, to keep the windows on the right side of our drawing the same size and height as the ones on our left. And by taking that construction line all the way to the middle and then down the other side again, we can make sure that that happens. We keep them the same on both sides of our drawing. So once more, same as on the other side, we'll drop in some vertical lines, but don't let your lines lean. Keep them upright. The most common mistake I see is where people just let those lines lean out in one direction or the other. And your drawing will suffer for this. Keep those lines vertical. Once you've got those all done, you can go over them with your bold pencil or press harder and commit to those lines being on your drawing. As always, if they don't look good, don't go over them. Make sure that you're happy before you go over things and it should look like this. Uh, one last detail to add then, I'm going to put some brickwork on the side of my castle. I quite like to do this in a big blank space to make it have a bit of depth and character and texture. You don't have to do this of course, but notice that the lines for the bricks are either vertical or those lines go to the vanishing point. If you're drawing on the left hand side of your drawing, they go to the left hand vanishing point. If you're drawing on the right hand side of your drawing, go to the right hand side. And there's our drawing. This one is the first task for you to try if you'd like to. It is slightly easier to have a go at. Uh, if you did well with this, have a look at the next task, perhaps do a castle tower which sticks out a little bit in the middle. If you did really well, maybe go on to a complete castle, much more difficult though, of course. Or you're welcome to try this one again. Have a go at rewinding this, turn your page over, try, try once more, see if you can improve on what you did. And any of those options are really good ones for you to take. Thanks very much for your time. Well done. Thank you for your effort. Uh, and I will see you uh, I'll see you again in the next one.